First, let's create this form with three columns and three function buttons. In the first column, we write this. Let's create space between the first and third columns by making the second column narrower like this. Now in the third column, let's create the input fields. To do it, let's select the cells we want to use by pressing the control key. In the font section, click on the borders icon and select outside borders. Let's make the design prettier by adding a border to the whole form. Go to insert, then in shape, select the rectangle and draw it in front of the form. Then in the shape fill, let's remove the background by clicking on the no fill option. Also, let's change its thickness by selecting the weight section and choosing one of the thickness options. Now let's draw a rectangle which will become a button on the form. Choose a color for the rectangle and copy and paste it two times. Right click in each rectangle and choose edit text. Then type the button's function name, today, save, and clear. Finally, Remove the grid lines by going to the main menu and clicking on view. Then uncheck the grid lines checkbox. Leave the product input field as it is. Let's configure the price and subtotal fields. Select both cells, then go to data and click on data validation. A window is opened. In the Settings tab at the Allow section in the drop-down menu, select Decimal. In the Minimum section, type 1, and in the Maximum section, type 1000. In the Error Alert tab, let's type a message like, for example, Error, then click OK. Now return to the Price field. Right-click and select Format Cells. Here, select Currency, then click OK. Let's apply the same currency format to the subtotal field. Now, right-click the Amount field, then select the Format cells. Apply the Number format and select two decimals, then click OK. Finally, right-click the Date field and choose Format cells, then select Date, then click OK. Whew! Please buy me a coffee and brighten up my day. See the link in the description below. Thank you. Now select all the labels by pressing Ctrl or Command and all the cells we're going to use. Then copy them with Ctrl or Command plus C. Now click the plus sign to create a new sheet. In the new sheet, select a cell. Right click and select Paste Special. Here click on Values and also Transpose. Then click on the OK button. As you can see, the labels were pasted horizontally. Now press Ctrl plus T to create a table. Make sure to check the option My Table Has Headers, then click OK. Below Product, type Subtotal. Then in the next cell, type this formula. Equal sign, Subtotal, parentheses, select the number 9 option, Sum, comma, then click on the cell below Price. Now close the parentheses and click Enter and that's it. The formula will be applied to the price column. To apply the same formula to the amount and subtotal cells, just drag it to these two cells as you can see now. In order to store the data of the form, use the function in Excel called Macro. A macro is an action or a set of actions that you can run as many times as you want. If you want to know more about Macro, let us know in the comment section. To activate this option, go to File, then Options. Here, click on Customize Ribbon and check the Developer option. Apply the changes by clicking the OK button. What the macro will do this time is record your mouse clicks and keystrokes. Let's type an example. In Product, type Ultra Glass Price $15 and Amount 1. For the subtotal field, let's use a formula. Equal sign, then click the price field, multiplication sign, and click on the amount field, then click enter. In other words, we are multiplying the price with the amount. 
In the date field, we write 02 forward slash 21 forward slash 23. Now we are ready to record the macro. Click on the developer option, then in the record macro. In the window that is open, type the macro name. For this example, write save, then click OK. As you can see, the macro is recording. Go to sheet 2 and insert two rows as you can see now. Go back to sheet 1 and copy the data we just wrote. Then paste it in sheet 2 using paste special values transpose and click OK. For price and subtotal, let's use the same format we applied previously, currency. And for amount, let's apply the number format with two decibels. For date, we apply the date format. Then stop recording. Let's apply the macro we just recorded to the save button. To do it, right click on the save button and select the assign macro option. A window is opened where you can see the macro we just created. Select it and click OK to apply the macro. Get ready to say goodbye to your old case because Casemate has a better one. See the link in the description below. Now if you enter new data and click on the save button, you will see that the form is now working. Great! Let's add more features to the form. We are going to use another macro. The action we want to record is how to clear the form. Being on the Developer tab, click the Record Macro. A window is opened. Here, let's name this macro, Clear, then click OK. The macro is recording. Let's select all the fields except the subtotal field. Now hit the Delete key, then stop the recording. And that's it. Let's assign this action to the Clear button. Right click the Clear button. Select the Assign Macro option, click on Clear, and then OK. As you can see, whenever we want to clear or delete the fields, we click the Clear button. Very good. Finally, let's add a macro to set up the date. Go back to the Record Macro icon and let's name this macro Today. Then click OK. In the Date field, let's type this formula. Equal sign, Today, open and close parentheses, then hit Enter. Then click Stop Macro. Now let's assign this macro to the Today button. Right click the Today button, then click Assign Macro. Click the Today macro and then click OK. Let's test it. Everything is working very well. Let's add an extra detail to make our form look more professional. Being in the Developer tab, let's click on the Visual Basic option here. In the new window, click on Modules. Then double click on Module 1. A window is open with code. In the Subsave section before the End subsection finishes, let's write this. MSG box, open parentheses, open quotation, saved data, close quotation, close parentheses, and that's it. Let's go back to test the form. We write the data, then click on the Save button. Voila! The form is working. Great! To save your form, go to File, choose Save As, and select where you want to save your form. Give the form a name, and in the Save As type, make sure to select Excel Macro Enabled Workbook. This is an easy and professional way to save your data in Excel. Maybe at first you feel that Excel macros are complicated, but they are actually very simple, and with practice you will be able to increase your productivity with them. Let us know your thoughts about it.